So Alex, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Thanks so much, Sophia. Now, Amnesty International put out an urgent action notice. Um, they only, Amnesty only puts out those notices for human rights violations. So what's going on here? Is our environmental issues considered a human rights issue now? Yeah, this caught a, a, a lot of public attention around the world and, and, and a lot of media coverage, mm -hmm. which is good because hopefully that means more people will, will take up the urgent action itself. You're quite right. Uh, Urgent actions are a technique we've been using for decades uh, and it, as the name suggests, reflects a situation that we think has incredible urgency. Um, someone who's just been arrested, for instance, they've disappeared into prison. We think they're at risk of torture or even execution right now. So we have to respond now, get the letters and petitions coming in as quickly as possible. Uh, but it, as I say, has, has, has generally been on behalf of an individual or a small group of individuals. Mm -hmm. And has generally been about very specific kinds of human rights issues. Uh, and mostly torture, political sorts of issues, right? Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I think what really captured attention here was that it was an environmental mm -hmm. concern, and a lot of people raised their eyebrows and said, is that Amnesty International? Is that a human rights issue? I'll come to that in a minute. <laughs> but I think the other thing that really caught attention was, my heavens, this is an urgent action for an entire city, mm -hmm. and a big city, Lahore, Pakistan, mm -hmm. you know, 10 million plus people. Uh, we have certainly never issued an urgent action on behalf of so many people. Uh, but I think it's reflective of the fact that the human rights issue at stake, um, given the Lahore smog crisis, literally does urgently affect every single person in that city. It does mm -hmm. reflect all 10 million people and it goes to crucial human rights, the right to health, the right to life even, uh, and, uh, and therefore it was an absolutely appropriate tactic to use. Mm -hmm. How would you respond if someone said, look, you know, Pakistan has a small crisis, but we're dealing with climate change and environmental you know, pollution all over the world, even in Canada. Um, who are we to call the shots or, or to call out another country? Uh, and we would absolutely agree with the first part of that observation <laughs> that this is global. Uh, the, the range of environmental concerns and, and most significantly the incredible peril of the rapidly worsening global climate crisis uh, is something that is of direct human rights relevance to every single person who lives on this planet. Um, and, uh, and that we as Canadians have a big piece of that story. We are a significant uh, source of carbon emissions in the world. While something is starting to be done about it, we do not have the kind of bold and ambitious action that's really going to start to make a difference. Uh, we have so much more to do uh, in Canada and we are campaigning for that as mm -hmm. well. So I guess people should know that just because we're highlighting the situation in Lahore does not at all mean we aren't also highlighting mm -hmm. similar concerns or, or raising environmental action that other governments, including the Canadian government, need to be taking as well. We need, we need to take it all on because these environmental challenges in many respects pose the biggest global. threat it's, it's to human rights threat, in yeah. our world today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it truly is global. So tell me a little bit about the smog crisis. What is it about, you know, what is causing it um, and, and what can we do? Well, it's, uh, it, my understanding is that it's a long-standing and fairly entrenched situation in Punjab, in Pakistan, and Lahore has, has really felt this um, in a worsening way for a number of years now. And there certainly is work that's been done. There's a, there's a public uh, commission of some yes, kind, the, yes. the Punjab Smog Commission, mm -hmm. I think, which, uh, which the members of which are actually appointed by court and, and have a real sense of authority. They've uh, put recommendations out as to what needs to happen. Uh, it traditionally is worse during a, about a three or four month period of the year between October uh, and February. I'm not the environmentalist who would have an authoritative <laughs> description as to what it is about that season, but there's a number of factors that, that make it even worse. Mm -hmm. uh, during I believe that the burning of crops. So yeah, that's yeah, part of it, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, but what we see is the numbers are just staggering. At, at least half of the time during this last month, for instance, of November and into December, the air quality index has been double the, the, the most serious concern, mm -hmm. which is the hazardous level. So mm -hmm. it's been double what it is to even be hazardous. Uh, and that's a level at which it's opposing immediate 
very, very serious health threats uh, mm -hmm. to the entire population and especially to the young and to the elderly. And it, it's not enough to just shrug your shoulders and say, well, that's just how it is in Lahore, uh, while the government really refuses and fails to take the action that has already been laid out as to what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the young and old. I was also thinking about people who are, you know, the poor um, people in the population who maybe are working jobs where they can't get away from that air. Or, for example, they don't have access to health care or some of the other measures that people who are wealthier might have, you know, being able to purify their homes, air, air purifiers, those sorts of things. That right? is such an important point, and I think that really powerfully captures, we're often asked whether it be about the climate crisis or, or you know, a smog situation like this, really, what's the human rights issue at play mm -hmm. here? And there's a lot of answers to that, but one is exactly as you framed it, uh, when there is a massive environmental catastrophe or a smog crisis, etc., time and time again, it is the most marginalized uh, who suffer worst, uh, who are going to be put perhaps most directly in harm's way, are going to have the least access to health care and, and other measures that might help them um, you know, get treatment, etc. And the marginalization is, of course, all about human rights, because when we say a marginalized community, inevitably it's a community that faces discrimination, that faces racism, uh, because their rights are violated. They're refused uh, the, the rights to be kind of treated equally with other members of, of society. So, so it's grounded, everything that flows from that marginalization, including the greater risk of harm, of suffering in an environmental crisis, all has its roots in that human rights beginning. Mm -hmm. Alex, what do you want the government to do? I mean, what are you asking of the government? So the urgent action that we've issued has, has actually two very straightforward requests. Mm -hmm. uh, the first is uh, a point around access to information. There's, there's serious concern that the, the government is not being fully open and transparent with the reporting they do around the smog crisis uh, and that they've been downplaying the numbers. They're using a scale that's a bit different, they've got a different from index, what, yeah. other, mm -hmm. uh, what other governments around the world use and so it, it constantly makes it look like it's better than it is. Uh, so there's just a very specific request about uh, making sure that the the air quality index measurements they're using are in keeping with what governments everywhere use so that the people of Lahore have information that is true uh, and can therefore make their own assessments, make their own uh, choices um, based on real and important information. The other goes back to the point I was mentioning earlier about the existence of um, the Punjab Smog Commission, uh, which has put in front of the government a number of measures, a number of actions that need to be taken, some of which with, with immediate urgency. Um, and our assessment is the government just is not moving on that as, at all. Mm -hmm. uh, so. In some respects, the answers are there. The answers have been formulated by experts uh, from an authoritative body. We just now need, as we often do in situations of human rights abuse, political will to do the right thing. Alex, thank you for joining me to speak about this important topic. Thanks so much. It is, it is a situation that, that needs more attention. Of course, I think. yes.